What's up, Style Nation? Katie here, your favorite personal stylist and host of the Style for Life podcast. My mission on this show is to give you the key codes on how to transform your style into that VIP backstage pass to success. The styling strategies and mindset hacks that I share on the show each week are the same ones I use with my clients to boost their confidence, to book more clients, and to simply just feel good. Not to mention these techniques are the exact same ones that I've implemented personally over the last three years of building my own brand. After I was let go on Zoom from my 17-year marketing career. So if they can help me and my ego build this business and overcome that transition, I know that they can help and work for you too. So tune in every week as we decode the world of fashion, discover the power of confidence, and give you the scoop on how to create a style that amplifies your brands and your life. Swipe on that bold lipstick, hit the subscribe button because styled for life, this is where style isn't about what you wear, but how you live. Let's start the show. I see you and I know what you're thinking. It's time to break out of your fashion fog and do the thing in 2024. So Whether you're booking that new photo shoot or you're hosting an in-person retreat, or maybe this is the year that you get on some stages and you talk or you have a podcast tour coming up, whatever it is, it's time to get styled. So book a style consult today so we can determine the easiest way to turn your wardrobe and you into a powerhouse of confidence. Your message deserves to reach the masses. And this is how we can do that by amplifying your style and amplifying your confidence. So book a style consult today and we'll determine what you need. Maybe it's a VIP day. Maybe it's a color analysis or a wardrobe update. Or maybe the style squad is exactly what you need to grow your style, reawaken parts of yourself and do it alongside other amazing female entrepreneurs. Either way, Book your call today and let's start that conversation because honestly, December is the perfect time to plant seeds for Q1. It's my favorite time for reflecting and planning and just laying the groundwork for what's going to be the best year ever. I'm calling it right now, best year ever. Time to break up that fashion fog. And if you're wondering, yes, all of this can be done virtually, every single piece of it. The link will be in the show notes to book if you're ready to book that style consult. And guess what? It's time to get back to the show. Molly Lowe, Style for Life. Here we go. I'm so excited. Yes, me too. Let's go. Let's go. So Molly is a business coach and a fellow podcaster. Some of my favorite people on the planet um, with a podcast called Tall Glass of Sass. And I'm super excited for her to come on the podcast today. Super quick backstory. My very first LinkedIn live ever was with Molly. We had such a good time talking and we got into some juice and we uncovered this fun little thing that Molly does, which I think a lot of us do it without knowing that we're doing it. So we're going to label it and call it out today. And that's alter egos. I'm so excited to dive into this with you today. Thanks so much for being on the show. Love it. Love it. Thanks for having me because honestly, this really is an honor and a privilege. Not everybody's willing to, you know, vibe the same and you are really protective about your community. And so the fact that you're giving me the opportunity to be here, I'm just like, oh, thank you. (laughs) I'm super excited. Um, Let's just dive in with a little bit of, you know, I hate to ask because it feels so basic, but also at the same time, I do think it's so needed. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Molly, before we get into your other self? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. No, I love, I love, it's so true though. Right. Um, so yes. So high level, I'd always like to share. Hello, hello, y'all. My name is Molly Lowe, and I'm a business coach specifically for career development coaches. So think career coaches, leadership coaches, executive coaches, resume writers, all of the people who help you to elevate your professional career in your corporate nine to five. Now, um, 
some fun facts I think is always more fun to know than yes. just me like like be like hi this is who I am this is what I do which is all all good things right but um this is so tied to you being a stylist uh, so I own over 100 pairs of shoes and counting what? that's just like yeah it's my favorite uh Real talk, my favorite, it, I just, it's so hard for me to not continue buying. I have, I for, I bought my first pair of red bottoms and I'm like obsessed. And so every time I hit a milestone in my business, I'm like, time to go get another pair. Yes, this is. Uh, so love my red bottoms. Um, I am a super nerd when it comes to historical fiction novels, specifically Egyptian and biblical historical Fuck, fiction. I mean, I didn't know that about you and now I love you more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can yes. I get a hell yes. 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 I know. I love historical fiction and Egyptian and all of that. Woo. That's yes, another podcast seriously. for another day, Molly. Let's go. I know. <laughs> seriously. Yeah. So those are, you know, like, two fun facts. Um, of course, I'm, I'm a mom of three. I've got two boys and a girl and um, have been happily married, though sometimes wonder why my husband continues to put up with my crazy self. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hit our 15 year anniversary last month. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's yeah, like all good things, all good things. So that's me. Amazing. Um, I love that you shared the shoe story because you really got me thinking that day when we were talking and we were chatting, still a connection calling you to ask me, you were like, how do you handle if someone's being, um, what's the word that I'm looking for when someone's being shamed for spending money on themselves mm -hmm. and their clothes and their shoes. And I was like, that's such a good question. No one's ever actually asked it. I think it's a block that a lot of us have, but no one has ever actually come out and said to me, like people have made shitty comments because I publicly like, you know, own this side of myself. And there's a lot of shitty comments that come up when it comes to fashion and style and physical appearance. And it's, and I think maybe it's one of the reasons I correlate style and money is that everyone acts like oh, money is so bad. And I want to make impact and change. Yes, you do. But you also want to pay your bills. <laughs> like, Let's keep it fucking real. <laughs> right. hundred percent. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, and, and there's that um, stigma or negative connotation that people have. And I think I may have shared this with you when we were chatting. Um, because let's be real, social media haters, the struggle is real. Yes. People are out there. They're not kind all the time. And the post that, that um, <laughs> I wouldn't say attracted because that's not the right word, but that that came with the most haters in all of my six years of being in business was about, I made a post. I took a picture of a pair of um, one of my favorite most, so nine West shoes are the most comfortable for me. I can wear them all day. I actually like walked a Vegas strip on a pair of pumps from nine West, like all, all the things. And so I just took this really cute picture of, uh, you know, it was like um, a reddish orange, burnt orange color pair of pumps. And I said, you know, I'm a shoeaholic. I own it. I have over a hundred pairs and counting. And this lady just came at in, in my comments was just like, well, I really hope that you have no debt and that you've paid off your mortgage and all of that stuff, because that is um, not a, you know, responsible way essentially of like spending your money is just like, like splurging on shoes. And um, to your point, it was just like, whoa, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah. sure, you know, but there is, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's something about it that like people, it rubs them the wrong way because you, you own what you love and, you know, you and I've talked about this and we're going to continue talking about it today is your style for me, at least ties back to who I am. It's my identity. It's my like unapologetic self expressing that loudly for everyone to see without even having to say anything. Yeah. Right. So when you see me walking in, picking up my kids from school in my, you know, red, orange burnt pumps and my cute ass blazer, <laughs> you know, it's saying you know something. It is. <laughs> yeah. Like it's saying something without saying something, you know what I mean? And yeah. like, I know you know what I mean. <laughs> Rhetorical oh, I question. <laughs> 
But yeah, like it's crazy. It's crazy. But that's the reason why I had asked you that question because it, I, I do. I, I've experienced people who are just kind of like, oh, you know, your money should go elsewhere. And yes, paying my bills is important and all, all the things and being physically responsible. Um, and what I do with my money to express who I am is on me. All day. So many good gems there. First of all, um, however you spend your money, and this is my philosophy. If it makes you a better, kinder person on this planet, I literally don't give a fuck what you do to feel good about yourself, right? As long Amen. as this general consensus of just trying to be a kinder person, be it's really no one's business. But what really came up for me, and this is touchy as hell. I also want to touch on all the style things that you'd said around like, everyone's style is their identity, whether they think it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you've embodied it or not, whether you think it matters or not, it does. We judge people within less than seven seconds based on how they look, all of us. None of us are immune to this. Like you and I were joking ahead of this, is like, why can't my brain just play along with the game that I'm trying, right? And it's like, it has a mind of its own. And that's one of those things that people want to like we all want to be that better version but it's also just how we move and operate in this world is making assumptions and judgments even when we know we shouldn't be and even Mm -hmm. when we expect to be wrong about them we're still doing them all the time 100 percent. so like there's just so much juicy stuff there but when you said that to me the one thing that came up for me that i have a heart that is a little spicy is i don't think that People talk to men like that. And I don't see another man talking to another man like that. And it really triggered me in that when women do that to each other, I, I, I have no space and time for it. And it really brought up that feeling for me of, well, one, as a society, we never question men and how they spend their money, period. Men or women don't question another man and how he spends his money. And I think that needs to be shifted. And I think that's why a lot of women, <laughs> didn't we say we were going to prep for this? <laughs> a lot of women, <laughs> the Google alerts, <laughs> no one's questioning men how they spend their money. At least like, I don't see that in my experience, right? I can only speak from my experience. I don't see that as much. So when you said that, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And for me, style is always interesting. It's always a gateway, a mirror to the other things that are bigger, that are happening in life, which is why to me, it's super deep. Everyone thinks it's so superficial and it's just like how I look on the outside has nothing to do with the inside. And I'm like, Ooh, it's really just a representation of what you're feeling on the inside, what you're thinking when you put that outfit on people's reactions to it. Right. And it can really tell you so much more because it is that physical first um, reaction to it. So that was kind of my big takeaway. I was like, Ooh, this is really interesting because we do that a lot to each other. And like my first thought was like with moms, like, oh, I can't believe she let her kid do that. I can't believe her kid comes to school like that. Cause when my husband fucking takes my kids to school, no one fucking cares what they look like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. And you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I think that there's, um, what we can all acknowledge is that we can all do better. Right. And, and that ability, right, to just have a sense of awareness on how we're checking our thoughts. Yes. And what, right, it says so much more about you than it does the person that you're judging or thinking. Yes. You know, and, yeah. um, you know, what you, what you think doesn't always need to come out of your fucking mouth. That's all we got to <laughs> say about that. <laughs> and believe us, we know. <laughs> Because I'm sure, like me, like you, like, uh, how many times have you heard that one in your life? I'm like, okay, yeah. I know. That's when I practice yeah. daily. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and everyone's entitled to their thoughts and opinions and like, all good, all mm-hmm. good. And to your point, it's all about that kindness, right? It's it's um, what you're putting out there. Um, is it going to be something that's going to help increase positive vibrations and the positive energy? Um, sometimes it's not always worth having to take that energy to say all the bad things, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah I, don't, I, yeah. I mean, you and I, we're we're not Debbie Downers over here. We don't want to keep talking about all the negative things, but you know, that's facts. It was just interesting because no one had ever asked me that, and I was like, "Ooh, just gonna touch on that." But what I 
really want to drive home is the other part of our conversation that really got me going. And then I was talking to somebody else and I was like, oh yeah, there's like a whole book about this and all this. So you mentioned to me that you have alter egos that you tap into. I would like you to introduce us to them and a little bit, each of them has their own style and let's talk about it. And then I, we'll go from there. I want to talk about how you use them in your business. What do you call on them for? And all of that fun juice, because I think it's a really fun way. Everything for me is like, is it fun? And is it easy? Like, and that's all. And then that helps me be a kind person, right? Which is at the end of the day, the game that we're playing. So this is fun to me because to me, it's a like character building and we love stories as humans, right? It's how we connect. So introduce us to your alter egos. Tell us about them. You have two. Yes, I do. I have two. Yes. So let me kind of prep where and why and when they came about and, and how they were created. And so real talk, I didn't even know right that beyonce had a sasha fierce before oh my god that's okay, what yeah. i was just thinking i was like yes i'm gonna say this does molly know this <laughs> <laughs> i didn't i do now obviously yeah. right but people ask me they're like oh so you have a sasha fierce i'm like who they're yeah. like oh your alter eagles is like beyonce beyonce has one and that was just and that was a validation and affirmation for me that I'm like, look, if if the queen bee needs her own Sasha Fierce, then I'm onto something, right? Now I need me too. <laughs> 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 but you know, that's that's, that's yeah, yeah, all fun things. And so this is three, three, depending on the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, for real, right? Who are you gonna get today? <laughs> Oh my goodness. But yeah, this, all my alter egos came about. So I have um, a, a really great um, business um, bestie and, and colleague and, and really personal friend. And he, we were, I was going through, I'm just going through my fields in a part of my entrepreneurial journey where I was trying to identify like my brand. I'm like, who am I? And entrepreneurship is one of the most um, sacred and spiritual journeys that you can go on because you are your brand starting out, especially as a coach, you know, like people want to partner and collaborate with you because of who you are. So it's not like you can just stand behind a product respectfully that you're like, Oh, here's my product that I'm selling. Right. Yeah. When you are a service-based coach, people want you and and they work with you for your level of confidence and like how you show up and all that stuff. And so I was in this um, transformational phase of my life and era. And I was just like, I was feeling this out of body experience where I was just like, every time I felt a sense of imposter syndrome, I felt like I had to like be somebody else until I could morph them into one, which I am really happy to say I'm, I'm that person today. But six years ago, when I started my journey, that was not like that. And so when I was in this, like, just kind of discovery phase of transformation, I was like, you know what, how do I feel in, in the moments in which I need to show up for myself, even though I may not feel it or believe it yet because of the imposter syndrome, what, what do I need to show up as? And that's how Victoria and Ren came about. So I'll start with Victoria because she's a little, she's classy. Yeah. You know, she, yes, she's a little bit more, um, digestible. <laughs> so Which one is that, that Victoria or Ren? I'm taking notes. This is Victoria. Victoria. Okay. Yes. Now Victoria. Yeah. She is, she is cool, calm and collected. She has a sense like she is boss babe through and through. Like she's the one, if you were to see her, you already know that she owns her own fucking business. There's just no way that she's working for anybody else. Mm -hmm. She has, she has a sense of charisma, class, sophistication, intelligence about her. That's like, she going back to what I just said earlier, she says what she wants to say without saying anything out of her mouth. Mm. It's her presence, her aura. Okay. And you just know right off the bat. Now, when I envisioned her as that part of me, and this goes back to the styling, like I could not imagine her visually without putting colors behind it, without putting an outfit 
mm-hmm. behind it without picking the lipstick color that she's going to be rocking behind it. And that's that part of that identity that, that you and I talk about so much about. This isn't just clothes that you pick and choose and put on. It really helps you to step into who you want to be and who you need to be at that moment in time. And Victoria, okay, she is in a magenta fuchsia pink pantsuit, okay? She's got nude pumps on and her makeup is subtle. Yeah, she's rocking that hot pink lipstick because that's what she loves. Her hair is pulled back. She's got a nice pulled back, loose, not messy bun, but she's business. And as soon as she steps out, like you already know. Okay. Yeah. She knows, she knows, she knows exactly where she needs to be, what she needs to be doing. And she is nothing but just strategy. She's nothing than just inspiration and empowerment, right? In this pantsuit. So Miss Victoria I tap into her when it comes time for me to make executive CEO decisions and just owning the shit of making those decisions in a timely fashion. Because I believe that, you know, as a business coach, helping other coaches step into being better CEOs, being a better CEO for your business means that you need to be able to make executive decisions and you have to do them quickly. And it's just the compounding of decisions that help you to see the progress of your business moving forward. And she's just, yeah, Yeah. she separates the emotions from the business. She's like, look, I'm just making a business decision. There's nothing personal about this. What needs to happen moving forward? What needs to happen to drive my business forward? That's just who she is. Yep. Done. Okay. And so let's talk about her. Let's talk. Let's talk about Miss Ren. Yeah. yeah. She probably won't like that. I'm talking about her like that as (laughs) Miss Ren. (laughs) She's like, wait, what? No. So Ren is the, I don't give two fucks about anything and anyone. And I will say exactly what I want to say it, how I want to say it, when I want to say it. Hmm. She is the person who needs to, who shows up in times of hesitation and fear. Hmm. She's the one that's like, it's okay to be scared, dude. But don't allow fear to stop you from doing what you know you're meant to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there are times where when I visualized her, she's locked in the cage, to be honest. (laughs) She's just got energy like, not today. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and it's Victoria that's holding the keys. All right. (laughs) She's the one that's like, okay, girl, go back into your cage. It's all good. I will tap you when you need it. I got it right now, you know. Um, And Ren visually, favorite color is black. She is always rocking a red lip. Always, right? She loves anything with spikes in it. She's really rebellious. Um, She's going to have wild color hair. That's just who she is. She expresses who she is and her thoughts and beliefs uh, loudly. And if I had to pick one key word that she would say encompasses her, she is a badass and she hates being censored. Mm. So if you try to censor her, watch. You're, you're going to want to be <laughs> far away before she she tries to claw at you. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, when you want to talk about rocking the runway and just like really being there, I tapped into her, especially when I am doing branding photo shoots where I really need to feel confident in my skin when I want to feel I'm, I'm just feeling myself that day. And I just need to show up and just be fully energetic and just Say what I want to say, how I want to say it, when I want to, want, want to say it. She has really helped me to own my voice mm. and understand that the things that I say, again, I will always do my best to be kind and tactful about it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be spicy. There's going to be things that I'm going to say and I'm going to call out, which, which is going to r- ruffle some feathers. And 
it's coming through her. She's like, you have to say what you believe. You have to, you have to put your stake in the ground because if you don't stand for nothing, right, you got to stand for something. Yeah. So, 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 so what is that? And she's the one constantly pushing me to put my stake in the ground and say, this is my thought. This is my belief. This is my method. This is my philosophies. This is, you know, my methods. This is how I'm owning, you know, my shit and how I'm showing up every day. Um, And so, yeah, that's Victoria and Ren show up in, in, in my personal and professional life in the ways in, in which it serves them the best. And you said that now you feel like it's easier um, to navigate these. Like, I feel so. I tell people this all the time because people always come to me or like a a good style quiz. Everyone gets more than one. You're supposed to get more than one because you have more than one role in your life and there's more than one side of you. And like the one thing I think that we haven't we're starting to really recognize is we have two opposing feelings about the same fucking thing, the same thing, right? Like (laughs) I can sit on this and tell you, like, I am so sick of people showing up digitally online in their pajamas. Right. And at the same time, I fucking love going to the grocery store in my pajamas. Right. Love it. Um, so it's like, there's this constant, um, navigation through like these multi sides of us and, and how to make these things come together because we can't have opposing thoughts. I, I, kids are the best example of this, right? Like I love my kids and don't want to be around them all the time. <laughs> right. And it's like, but then when you're not with them, you're like, fuck, what are they doing? I miss them. And, and like, like waiting for them to get off the bus. Like, I'm so excited to see them. And then they're home for like three seconds. And you're like, and we're good. <laughs> right? Facts. <laughs> like if people are like, I don't, I don't know what you mean about having opposing feelings. I was like, here's an example that if you have kids, you would totally understand this one. And I think that's what the alter ego conversation is really interesting to me because I think it kind of, well, I think we all have this all the time, every day. We just don't label it as well as you have, which of course I just think is really fun. I, and I think I fell in love with this concept back when like, um, when Beyonce came out with Sasha Fierce and she was like, that's the performer. Like that's me when that's who I need to channel. Like when I'm going on stage, right? Like I'm not a mom in that moment and I'm not a wife and I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm this. Right. I think that's really powerful. So as you, you started the whole story out with six years in the business and things like that. And then now you, do you feel like you switch between them seamlessly? Like, do you realize that you're doing it? Or do you, if you have a bad day, are you like, okay, Ren, I need you because I'm struggling. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. Fast forward to today. I will say that it's a lot more seamless. Although I will say on the more, you know, um, the more, uh, what's the right word? Like challenging days where, um, I'm doing a lot of problem solving because that's what we do as entrepreneurs is we're a master problem solvers and we just solve one problem and the next and the next and the next. Right. Um, yeah. That's my problem. Could you fix that for me? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I can. (laughs) Because yeah, you know, um, on those days where my energy is really low or I'm just like, Oh, it's another problem that I have to address or I have to solve. It is, it's, it's mentally tapping into and just to your point, like channeling and allowing and turning on. It's really a switch, Mm -hmm. right? Where you're like, okay, who, who do, who needs to step up to the plate Mm -hmm. in the way that they think and the way they respond to situations um, to navigate this. And especially on challenging days where I'm, I'm, I'm solving a lot of problems, Ren Rend is she shows up when she's like, dude, chill the fuck out. This is really not that big of a deal. I know <laughs> it's stressing you out. I get it. But like, sit your ass down, calm down. It's just another problem. What what do you forget? You are just making this big this out to be something bigger than it needs to be, right? And then as soon as Ren calms me down, I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. It's just another problem. It's fine. It's everything solvable. Okay, good. Then comes Victoria. She's like, okay, now, now, now what needs to happen? What, what's the doing? Mm-hmm. How do you solve this? Right? So yeah, it is very much more seamless now. Whereas before you, you hit the nail on the head. I, when I first started creating them in my mind, 
it was because the only identity that I had was being a mom and a wife and a daughter and a daughter-in-law and a sister, right? Like Mm -hmm. that was what I attached myself to. And then at that point too, I attached myself as an HR leader for 20 years in corporate, right? So then you have- That's what I was going to say next is in your other identity at your job was done for you because someone handed you a job description and said, this is who you are and what you're going to do. Exactly. And so you just- met all of the bullets and you, you know, marked off the boxes of what you need to be in corporate. But as soon as you make now, most of us, okay, make the conscious decision to go into entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you'll hear people like, oh, hey, how did you land in your career? And they'll say, well, I just kind of, it just, I just kind of landed in it. It really wasn't a choice. I just ended up being in, in it. It's, it's very rare that you speak to an entrepreneur who's like, well, I just landed in entrepreneurship. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I made a conscious decision to go and do this. And when you do that, you mourn that side of your, like who you are, of what you're used to for 20 years, but then who are you becoming? Yes. Right. That alter, those two alter egos helped me to close that gap between who I was mourning of what I was Mm -hmm. into who I wanted to become in my journey and my business for my clients and ultimately who I am today for my family and friends. And so they really helped to close that gap and it helped me to identify like, yeah, clearly y'all can listen. I mean, you're hearing this. I can tell you exactly who's who, who's Victoria and who's run. I can tell you. And down to the lipstick shade, which I really yeah, (laughs) absolutely right. Like that, the fact that I can so clearly and in fine detail articulate who those two alter egos are of mine has helped me to now feel that much more confident in articulating who I am today. Yeah, I was going to say, because you know who you are, because there's really just exactly. a different version of you. It's just like, absolutely. yes, there's this version of me that's like, yeah, it's another problem. So what? On my good days, I can pull that. I am that. And then there's this other side of me that is so good at strategizing, right? No, I'm speaking of you, but, um, and yes, I am that too. But every day we wake up with different moods impacted by the a thousand different things that are happening in our lives. And sometimes you don't feel like that person, even though you, I mean, Jesus Christ. Like if <laughs> when I tell people, I'm like, yeah, but they're like, Katie, weren't you the same person that I was like, yeah, but <laughs> I'm not that person <laughs> right now. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It can change. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and it allows, if there's anything right that I feel like, in hindsight, looking back to that journey of the, the the creation of my alter egos, it has allowed for me to accept, truly embrace all of the different versions of me to coexist. Like who's to say that I can't be this or that or this, right? It just allows for me to be like, yeah, today I, I'm, I'm channeling run. Today I'm channeling me. Right today, I'm channeling um, Victoria because I need I need this, and that doesn't mean that you don't know who you are. It's just the different dynamics of who you are and yeah. how you show up, and yeah. it's okay to have multi versions and dimensions of you because you're you're human. You're not supposed to be one dimensional. <laughs> I think that's great though. Cause when I think of like entrepreneurship um, and learning new skills, right? Like as you go on the journey and you learn new skills. And that was one of the hardest things for me in the beginning was my husband was like, you need to learn how to do this. I'm like, but I don't want to. He was like, well, you're not making money. So you need to learn how to do this. <laughs> and, and then not even just that, but then that evolves into the next thing where a client asks you for something and you're like, Oh, no one's asking that. And like, you're just constantly going up these new levels, these new levels. And if you're not really clear on letting your identity evolve, you will never get to those goals. Like, because that's the number one thing that you're committed to. And it will be the number one thing that holds you back. Like if you have those feelings on those days, like you were saying where something's happening and you don't believe that there's a piece of you, version of you, dimension of you that can handle it, then you're not going to rise up to the task. Absolutely. Everything is a test. Everything is like, 
you know, if you want it bad enough, you got to figure out a way to navigate it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Oh my gosh. I have n- the amount of things that I have learned on this journey. If you, if you went back in time and even better yet, I always joke around. I was like, <laughs> yesterday we were walking, we were watching back to the future. And I actually said to my husband, I'm like, if I found the DeLorean on the side of the road and I decided to jump in it and go back to when I was like 16 or 17 years old, and I'm like, you're going to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I, my younger self would like laugh in my face. We're like, yeah, okay. Are you crazy lady? And I would <laughs> yeah. have to take my Biff cane and like pop myself <laughs> in the head and be like, no, for real. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't have never believed it. It really, I, it's just the transformation and, and naturally I'm an overachiever through and through always have always will be right. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I've been able to climb the ranks in corporate so high. And that still is instilled in me today in like my dedication and worth ethic in my business. But that overachieving side is exactly that you hit it. You have to learn and you learn so much when you do your business, things that you never knew you were going to learn. And then you learn it. And then you're like, oh, that wasn't bad. Oh, I can learn to do new things. So the ident- So one more quick identity thing before we tell everyone how to hang out with you. Because I mean, absolutely. Life, is the overachieving one is one that I identify with. And then I have to let go because running a business and... I didn't feel good last week and I had to allow myself instead of to push, 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 which I identify with to lay down two times, which is like fucking unheard of, but I really wasn't feeling good. And that for me is like all these things you're talking about is like, I identify as an overachiever, firstborn child, overachiever. If any, any of my Enneagrams, um, astrology, whatever you look up, it's going to say overachiever. (laughs) Overachievers don't take naps, right? They don't rest. <laughs> they don't slow down. And that's been the greatest thing I've learned on this journey of whether you call it an alter ego or version of yourself or a dimension of yourself is saying, yes, I identify as this and I can do this too. Like you said, if I want it bad enough. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. hundred percent. I was just having a conversation with someone earlier today and he has um, studied and practiced Enneagram for 40 years, 40 years. Okay. And he was like, let me guess you're a three. I'm like, how did you know? (laughs) (laughs) What was it? The next girl that I'm looking at? The climb? The giveaway? I know. And he was like, no, it's your, you you are the achiever. Like that's your motivation every day to wake up and you, you're going to achieve and you're going to do things today. Right. And That's when, when you can identify these alter egos, it, it helps you to be okay with more is not always more. And when you're an overachiever, right, we tend to overwork, (gasps) right? And it's so easy because you're like, okay, yeah, if I just push in one more hour in my day, my business, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have better results tomorrow. And that's not always the case you know? And so, yeah, Victoria, especially Ren, she's like, sit your ass down, go take a nap. You know what? Let's be a slacker today and call off of work. (laughs) I think I've been doing Ren all week. (laughs) 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 Like, And we'll say I'm on my period. So I do try to give myself a little bit of credit during that. She's like, oh, you don't really need to work. You're fine. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And she, and she's like, you, you already, you did, do you remember last week when you put those additional hours in? Like that's, duh, you paid the dues for that for yeah. this week. So it's like, yeah. it balances, it checks and balances it out. It's yeah. good. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And you, and you need that. You need that for yourself to just, just find that harmony and balance of, of yes, you can achieve and it's okay to be a little bit laid back every once in a while too, because you're going to burn out. And by that time, then, then you're going to have Victoria being like, I told you. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're laid back, it's so my husband and I are radical opposites because I was like, cool, but sometimes you need to have a plan. <laughs> sometimes you need a little overachiever in you. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 
Um, so speaking of identities, that's just one that I totally wrapped up in. So I love this conversation around alter egos and being able to pull those different sides of yourself and just allowing them to come through. And I think it's really important for people who are beginning uh, that entrepreneur journey, which is exactly the woman that I'm talking to all the time is like, how are we using our style to boost our mindset? You know, how are we using our style to empower our business and, when I think of style, I think of those things. I think of who am I dressing for today? Who, am, Not for outside of me, but like what version of myself am I dressing for today? How do I want to feel today? What am I trying to achieve today, this week, this month, this year? And how is my outfit? And the energy that the outfit's going to give me, like the alter ego has the outfit, right? That's going to help me get there. So this has been amazing. Molly, pimp yourself out. Where is everyone finding you and all this juicy, juicy gems? Yes. Now, of course, you already called it out for those of you who who are like, yeah, this is my vibe. This is my energy. I want to hear more. A Tall Glass of Sass. That's my podcast. Feel free to check me out on Apple or Spotify. Um, and then, of course, naturally, because I am the LinkedIn queen, if you want to chat, hop on over you can find me on linkedin you can either search up lotus mentoring um, or molly low you'll find me on linkedin thank you for being on the show this was such a juicy interesting conversation thank you right back at you